Any opportunities in the COVID? Um, do you see, how, how do you see, and I know we've talked about this a couple of weeks and they've said, hey, quit talking about COVID, but but I think it's super interesting to to think about, you know, how, how are things going to change? Are, are things are going to change for good. What are the opportunities? You know, one of the things I, I hear you say before is that, you know, hey, there's a lot of chaos, but chaos is a time that you can create opportunities. And, and, and uh, what do you think some of those opportunities are that are coming out of the chaos? The main thing that we, we, we just had this conversation yesterday is our, our COVID test came in. It's like, we got to be nimble because we don't always know what these opportunities are. Um, our, yeah, we have found locally that our the things that we have done to date, being accessible, being in, having a, a wide delivery area, having a, a, a essentially, and I hate to call it a call center because it's really not, but having our staff engaged with a lot of people in the community across you know 30, 40, 50 miles for um, for ongoing time up to this point, it's, it's been made us what we're doing very valuable, and so others are trying to tap into what we're doing. To me, that just tells tells a story of. You know, local contact is pretty valuable. And you look at like now the postal services under under all this, um, people aren't traveling, makes us even more valuable. So we're trying to figure out how to best leverage this. Um, I, you know, my wish list is I think every Medicaid program in the country should engage pharmacies just like mine in every community and pay us for managing the care of their highest risk patients. It's happening in pockets all over the place. And we've been talking about this for a long time. Um, we're, we're well prepared to do this and are working with other pharmacies in our region to make this pitch and continue to make this pitch to Medicaid programs. But I just think care management from the pharmacy from a trusted person that has access to the community makes so much sense right now. As you know, I was almost late to this a minute ago because I was working with some contact tracing stuff around COVID with our health department this morning. And it, it just tells me how valuable our staff is. They're struggling for contact tracing and these people are getting paid a lot of money to do contact tracing. I'm like, well, man, our, our staff could hop up. We could knock out these all day long. We're set, we're set to do it and they know everybody in the, in the county. So why are we not being hired to do the contact tracing? So I just think this local value is not being expressed enough. I think that's what COVID is telling me. We're valuable if we can just stay here and capitalize on some, maybe some of the testing, some of the other opportunities through public health, make sure that we're compensated for these things and we're negotiating this right. Um, I've been talking to the, the primary care groups in, in the area. You know, this remote patient monitoring is really important right now. They're having a hard time getting people back into the clinics and they're absolutely just dying and withering from a lack of office visits. You know, their revenue's down. So we're, we're talking to them about how we can help recruit and uh, engage these patients of, that, are, that should be coming to their clinics and then follow up with them regularly in order to keep them in there. And that's been very well received. So I, I think that's the opportunity right now is expressing our value locally. But again, if you're counting prescriptions and not looking past the counter, what you're seeing is your volume going down because new prescriptions aren't currently being written because nobody's seeing anybody and you're just getting depressed. But if you step out like, wow, why are the new prescriptions going down? Well, it's nobody's being seen. What can I do about that? Let's go see if we can use our resources to help these people be seen by the clinic. Something that kind of a, and I hate to have been in this for as long as I have been and not really thinking about this, but, you know, one of the things I get listening to, to Trip is that if you're a pharmacy and you're not connected to the community, if you haven't met the doctors, if you don't know who the local public health people are, if you don't know who the local plans are, not the national plans, if you don't know who the local plans are who are competing for stuff, you don't have a chance because these innovative ideas are local. They're not a national, right, we're not going to give you this yeah. national formula mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that says, hey, here you go, here's your checklist, work this out. You know, the checklist is, is being smart and nimble and getting involved with people locally and listening to their problems and figuring out what you can do about it. And that's not, totally and agree. that's the, the CPSN is a piece of that. Cause that gets you more local. That gets you down to your state. You know, a lot of those things are local, but um, I don't know if we do enough, you know, and, and one of our deals, we're all about if independent pharmacy is not successful, we don't have a chance. That's what we do. Right. And so, you know, uh, that's our motto, you know, to save and revitalize independent pharmacy and try to, you know, put the, the things that we build and the things we do and the ways we try to motivate people um, who are on our platform. I think one of the things we need to be saying that we need to be saying, hey, guys, if you don't know these people, right, if you don't know these people in your neighborhood, you're not going to be you're not going to make it. 
And, and so it's not just about getting efficient and doing your workflow efficiently and all that stuff. You got to get out there and you got to make contacts and you got to figure out now you may have to do some of that to do it. You may have to get your inventory right and do med sync in order to free up some time to get out there and, and right. talk to the community so that you may have some foundation stuff you do before you can, you can take an afternoon a week and, and go do things like that. But, um, that's interesting. It's one of the things I think we'll have to change based on this discussion today. You know, and I, I read an article last night um, that said that they're expecting, based on a physician survey that some of the the American Medical Association did, um, they said that something like 16,000 independent practice physicians would permanently close their clinics or have already closed their clinics due to the pandemic. You know, there's a, another area in your, your local place where there's a there's a gap now and pharmacy will have to fill that yeah there's a reason that independent physician in our building called us asking for help with covid testing because i'm sure she's still in that same struggle um she knew to call because we'd engaged her i mean we we are we were you know, she could text me if she needed some help with something i'd already been in there we we knew her same thing with these others and i jeff i'm, I'm totally with you you got to get your house in order first because you don't want to overcommit. If you overcommit and fail, you may never get a chance to to deliver on that again. And you definitely don't want to burn any bridges or leave a bad taste in somebody's mouth. But if, once you've got your house in order and you've got the, the basic workflow down where you can deliver on some of these things, knocking on local doors is not hard. I mean, it, you're all in the same communities together, whether it's urban or rural. I mean, you're all in the same, you're, you're taking care of the same people. There's always something to talk about. So um, I, I can tell you, I'm not a take no very well. I mean, I, I'll wear you out just persistent and trying going back because I know that you always don't get a yes the first time. And so, yeah, that's kind of how it is with a lot of these guys. Some of them open up right away, but most of these docs we're working with, the clinics, the C-suite guys at the at the um, health clinic groups, you know, they they are receptive to somebody that's willing to help. And if the pharmacy puts himself out there and we're willing to help, what does it look like? I don't know. Let's figure it out together. Man, those partnerships are golden. I mean, that that's how you want to do. You want to be seen as a local partner, not as a vendor that's coming in telling you how they're going to easy button and automate all your stuff. That's what they're usually doing.